Welcome back, Seawolves fans. Josh Law and Derek Ladner here from the Omnitech War Room in Gulfport. Ready for some hockey action tonight in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's payback time. Uh, it is payback time. It's payback time. Got to fix your audio there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like old times, you yeah. and me. Just, yeah, just uh, me and you hanging out. Ready for some Popeyes. Yeah, definitely. But I'm most I'm ready more for hockey. Yeah, it's it's been a minute, and I mean, last week it's still. Any time there's no hockey, it's been a minute. Yeah. So you know, I'm ready for some action tonight, and ready for uh for a good game. I think it's going to be a really good game tonight. Are you ready for a uh, Joe Pace return? Yeah, Joe Pace uh, back in the lineup for us tonight. Uh, it's good to have him back out there, and you know, uh, have some more defensive presence with some veteran leadership back on the team as well. And uh, I did see a, a graphic posted of Richard Pinkowski returning as well. Pinkowski, it's always good to have that physical presence. I mean, we have Lucas Helland as well, but now right. having that kind of uh, that dual power uh, as far as that presence on the ice to deter people from taking advantage of situations. Just in time for the uh, three-game series in Baton Rouge to cap off the regular season. So do you, do you think our guys are going to come out and use this uh, three-game series with Baton Rouge as a uh, practice run getting ready for Wednesday night? I would say yes in the effect of making sure everything chemistry-wise is lined up, is good to go. Um, not practice as far as, like, these games don't matter. It's still the regular season. Right. These games matter. Right. Even though we're locked into our seating in the playoffs, you still want to go out there and play a full 60 minutes. So I see it as more of uh, basically just making sure they have everything in line uh, to be as best prepared they can for, for this week. Uh, you know, you – our guys need to make it a statement, right? Come out three games and, and dominate three straight games. Kind of like Baton Rouge did us, you know, a couple of weeks ago going – or yeah, a couple we, of weeks ago. I mean, we played well against them that Thursday and then coming back from that, it was just those, Friday, something Saturday, wasn't Sunday, right with those right. next three nights. Uh, but utilizing these three games, carrying that momentum into the first round of the playoffs, we've beaten Columbus this year. We've gotten close on a few other accounts, and all we need is two wins to move on to the second round. Yeah, uh, so we'll play Wednesday night at home, and then we'll travel to Columbus Friday. We're not even going to talk about Saturday because we're going to dominate at home, and then we're going to go into Friday and uh, win that in their place too. No, that's the key. I mean, you take it one game at a time, but, you know, and, and looking ahead as far ahead as you can, you want that first game at home, kill the momentum for Columbus coming back home that Friday night, taking it in a sweep, hopefully. Right. Best case scenario. Best case and moving I mean, on. You know, for granted, we have the team. No, you know, we do. We, we have the team. Just, you know, we have to stay disciplined and play our game of hockey. You know, play – our guys have to play with the intensity that we know they can play with for three full periods. And I think the key with that, you know, we've had offensive success. Um, our defense has definitely picked up the last month and a half, I'd say. But it's still trying to limit the, the opposition's opportunities coming into our defensive zone. So not chasing the puck, playing your man. Um, and, you know, just trying to limit any scoring opportunities or even shot opportunities uh, from the visiting or from the other team, excuse me. And a couple of unfortunates that, that we've seen, uh, you know, our fans have seen uh, the, the IRs. You know, we've seen uh, Joaquin Nielsen go out on IR, uh, Blake Wyrick IR, unfortunately. You know, things happen. I uh, hope those guys get well. And, and uh, you know, again, it's unfortunate we don't – you know, we're not going to be able to see those guys in the playoffs. But next man up, let's go. Yeah, it's unfortunate timing anytime you have an injury in sports. I mean, that's regardless of the team, whatever's happening, you don't ever wish it on anybody. But um, all we can is hope that they uh, they get better fast and uh, they'll be ready to, to suit up here next season. Yep. And I believe that's going to be it for us now. We'll be back shortly uh, for here the puck on, drop. Here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. In the Omni Tech War Room.
All right, Seawolves fans, ready for some opening puck drop action. Seawolves versus Baton Rouge Zydeco. Game one of a three-game series here Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Goaltending matchup for tonight is going to be John Moriarty for Baton Rouge and Joe Shepard the fourth for your Seawolves. Josh, I'm excited excited about this game. How excited are you, Derek? Very excited to where I can't even say excited right. <laughs> no, it's good to be able to watch some Seawolves hockey back here. and Excited to call the game. It's been a while since I've done this as well. Glad to have you back. I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me back. So we got Lucas Helland and Matt Knack on the blue line for us tonight. Hugo Coast, Justin Barr, and Danny Lissio. On the front line, Baton Rouge winning the opening faceoff. Battling back and forth there in the neutral zone, dumping it back into the Seawolves' territory. Lucas Helen trying to dump the puck back around the end of the ice. Some good aggressive play by both teams here early on. Looks like Lucas Helen and Justin Barr, and Justin Barr comes out with the puck. Justin takes it out, passes it up, looks like to Lissio. Justin Barr intercepting the pass, not able to get quite enough on it, taken back by Baton Rouge in their own territory. Nick Catola with the puck behind his own net. Trying to get something set up to break out of their own zone. Puck's going to go cross the ice back in for Connor Lynn. Lynn's going to dump it back up, taken away by Baton Rouge. Curtis Hansen trying to take it away, but Mississippi... Doing a good job, Jackson Bond passing it back over to Connor Mullins. Jackson Bond taking the puck over center ice, taken away by Michael Haskins, in turn taken away by another Seawolves player. So we do have another jersey change tonight. Matt Stoya is now wearing 74. Shot taken up by Shep. Shep's going to give it back. I believe that's to Connor Lynn. He's going to pass it up across the top of the circle and turn back over to Bond. Bond not able to take the puck, and Baton Rouge is going to take it back in. Noah Robinson with the outlet pass over, I believe, to Curtis Hansen. Hansen back to Graham. Graham going to... Try to battle in throughout the net. Joe Pace battling there with MJ. Robinson able to keep the puck in the Seawolf zone. Quick little dump back in behind the net. Tristan Clusot and Dalton Anderson battling there. Joe Pace right behind him as well, trying to move that puck loose. Players lost a glove. Not sure exactly who that is right now. Puck almost coming out. Portillo trying to take it away. Again, battled up against the board and see will do finally get it out of their own zone. Moriarty out to play the puck, dropping it back behind for one of his own defensemen. Battled back in the left side corner by Portillo. Justin Barr waiting at top of the circle, trying to take the puck. Baton Rouge able to successfully get it out. Skating back in, three on one. Good defensive play by Mississippi. Taking the puck away from Larwood. Larwood able to take it back himself. Trying to get a pass over to Blake Sirotson. Quick shot on net. Kicked aside by Joe Shepard back in the corner. Seals battling it back out. Still just can't get that puck right out of the zone. Quick shot. Saved by the left arm of Shepard. Taken away by Justin Barr. Barr passing it back out. Over to Lucas Helen. Helen's going to dump it back in. Taken away by Barr. Barr dropping it off for Koch. But Koch not able to corral it. Baton Rouge able to take the puck out of their own zone. Skating in two on two. Lucas Helen with a good check there to interrupt the play. Kicked aside by Joe Shepard. Awkward shot. Danny Lissio trying to take the puck out. Running into his own teammate. That's Koch. Baton Rouge taking the puck. That is Larwood taking it across center ice. Quick, quick shot, excuse me, 
by Michael Haskins. Nick Catola trying to get some work in. No help really around the passing it over to Haskins. Haskins pass over the blue line back over to Catola. Good pass attempt there. No one there to take it, unfortunately. Would have been a great scoring opportunity for Baton Rouge. Matt Stoya skating in, trying to interrupt some plays there. Baton Rouge, the puck back on the left circle. Quick shot, going to go wide left of the net. Wide right, excuse me. Outlet pass over to center ice. It's Matt Stoya passing back over to Jackson Bond. Bond trying to get it back to Stoya. Puck taken away by Baton Rouge, skating around the short side boards. Philip Long. So early on, it's looking like people are having really real trouble trying to contain the puck. It's jumping all over the place. Stoya <laughs> caught up there on the blue line. Yeah, you're not lying. It's 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 all over the place. Oh, oh. great scoring opportunity. Baton Rouge not able to capitalize on that quick shot opportunity still battling for it here on the near side boards good shot opportunity but gloved aside by Shep going to come away a little extracurricular activities Matt Stoya holding someone back Joe Pace coming in, talking to one of his own guys and pushing another Zydeco player away. This to be number 71 of Narek Alexanian. I do apologize if I'm butchering that pronunciation. Better you to me. And that's going to bring us to our first media timeout of the game. Stay tuned, fans. We'll be right back here on the Seals Broadcast Network. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. All right, Seawolves fans, welcome back. Puck back down in the Seawolves territory, far side boards taken away by Mississippi. Lucas Helen not able to crowd that puck, going to be dumped back into the Seawolves zone by Baton Rouge. Madinac taking the puck back behind Seawolves net, quick pass up to the side of the boards, not able to get through the legs of Tyler Larwood. Kuznetsov looking for a pass over. That's Dalton Anderson, the intended receiver on that pass, not to go through. Puck going to be dumped back into the Seawolf zone. That's going to be our first Omnitech icing of the night. Omnitech icing from the Omnitech war room. Omnitech support secure. We need to quit talking about a victory and secure it. Amen to that. Face off going to come to the right of Moriarty, won by Mississippi. 
It's Connor Lynn battling down there with the puck, trying to keep it in. Connor Mullins taking it back over. Quick attempt to keep it in the Zydeco zone, taken away by Baton Rouge up the far side boards. Nifty little pass right at the top of the circle. Connor Lynn still battling back and forth. Justin Barr. Nice poke check there by Danny Lissio. Great poke check, interrupting that play by Baton Rouge. Hugo, that's Koch. That is Hugo Koch. Koch and Barr with the puck at the top of the circle. The top of your screen taken away by Lissio. Lissio circling back up. Connor Pass Mullins. Quick shot on net. Awkward bounce on the screen. Looked like it might have been trickling back, but going back the other way, and that's going to be a flying biscuit. Glass Solutions. Glass Solutions. Have glass problems? Call Glass Solutions. They've got a solution. For your glass. Face-off coming back to the right of Moriarty. Looks like Philip Wong on the face-off. Philip Wong, Joe Pace on the wing. The former teammate Michael Haskins there battling back and forth. Face-off one by Mississippi. Another shot by Matt Going to go above the net again. So that's going to be another flying biscuit brought to you by Glass Solutions. Say, Matt Stoy has got one heck of a slap shot. Mississippi looks like they initially won that face off, almost taken away by Baton Rouge. Puck going to be barely chipped over that blue line, so Mississippi's going to have to reset, dumping the puck back in. Good little check on there on Michael Haskins. Wasn't sure which Seawolf player did it, but Baton Rouge skating in. Quick outlet pass over from Curtis Hansen. Quick shot. I believe that initially went off the right post, but either way goes up in the air and corralled over by Joseph Shepard IV. Going to ice the puck on this play. Shepard taken away by Mississippi. Kuznetsov looking for an outlet pass across center ice, blocked away. Lucas Helen crowned the puck behind their own net, passing it back out, taken across by uh, Matanak, going to look for a quick shot right to the chest of Moriarty, not able to corral it. Good quick scoring opportunities by Mississippi. Nothing going in as of yet. Shot on net. Right into the breadbasket of Moriarty. He's going to freeze the puck. Face off this time going to be to the left of Moriarty. Justin Barr in the face off circle. Face off, almost a draw, on the draw. Taken back by Baton Rouge, trying to get out of their own zone. Lissio battling back and forth. Baton Rouge going to dump the puck back down the ice. Taking it back by Mullins. Mullins going to pass it back over. Larwood looking for a quick wrap wraparound opportunity. Excuse me. Quickly gloved aside by Shep. That's going to freeze the play here. Face-off coming to the right of Shepard. Bradley Richardson in the face-off circle for Baton Rouge. Taking on, I believe, Philip Wong. Baton Rouge winning the face-off. Michael Haskins trying to keep it in. Taken back over by Matt Stoya. Stoya and Bond. Quick shot on net. Good rebound. Not able to take it back. Baton Rouge battling behind their own net, trying to get it out of the zone. Kept in by pace. Deflected over by the skate of Stoya. Going to be covered up by Moriarty. Bringing another face-off here to his right. Face-off one by Baton Rouge, contested by Mississippi. They're able to clear it out, but it looks as if Puck's going to go out of play on a deflection. There's another Glass Solutions flying biscuit.
Faceoff coming back to the right of Moriarty once again. Philip Wong in the faceoff dot. Faceoff won by Baton Rouge, taken out of their own zone across the red line. Trying to dump it back in for MJ Graham. Going to just miss him. Graham's going to crowd the puck behind the net, but taken away by Joe Pace. Kept in there on the blue line by Baton Rouge. Another quick shot opportunity. Wide open net there on the left side. Not able to actually get anything on the shot. This puck's going to go wide. Good shot block there. I believe that's by Joe Pace. Good poke check as well. Baton Rouge continuing to keep the puck in. Another quick shot by Nick Atola, I believe. Jackson Bond here on the breakaway. One on O. Takes a shot. Great save by John Moriarty. Taken away by Nick Atola behind their own net. That's one thing you very seldom see is a save on a Jackson Bond breakaway. I think I've seen it maybe two or three times this season. Any other time, it's been in the net. Top corner. Unless he's hooked or tripped or something else on there, he's been pretty consistent. But that's going to bring us to our second media time out of the night. Fans will be right back here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any, anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. All right, Seals fans, back here from the Raisin Canes River Center, proxy of the Omnitech War Room in Gulfport. Yeah, uh, so... When we go on media timeouts, they just start playing, and then all of a sudden it shows them playing like they're, they're struggling on their feed. The growing, growing pains of a new team, Derek. Yeah. No, I understand. Trust me, I understand. <laughs> Mississippi taking the puck back away. Madinac looking for a pass. Just missing. Going to wave the icing off. Calls the linesman. There's got to be something up with either the pucks or the ice tonight. Just mm. both teams having issues trying to corral the puck. Anderson looking for a quick shot. Battled away by Catola. Hugo Koch and Justin Fortillo behind the net. Chasing the puck for Baton Rouge. Another quick shot. Ooh, no call there. Way to keep the puck in. It's Connor Lynn battling back. Baton Rouge taking the puck out of their own zone. Looking for a quick pass. Tipped away but taken back by... Number 19, that's going to be Scott Chirac of Baton Rouge. Puck just sneaking through the crease there, knowing they're on the backside to put it away for Baton Rouge. So we, we didn't discuss our pest of the game. We didn't discuss the pest of the game tonight. We'll say number 34 of Jake Cox is going to be our best. Looks like Hugo tonight. Coach here going across the blue line into the offensive zone. Dropping it back for Barr. Quick shot. Oh, Tyler Larwood there able to stop the puck from breaking through. Great scoring opportunity. Speaking of pests of the game, Tyler Larwood. Yes, Tyler Larwood. <laughs> Hugo Coach dropping the puck back for Joe Pace. Pace battling it out. Justin Barr and Tristan Klusat battling back down in. Baton Rouge trying to get it in front of the net, not able to do so. Good shot opportunity by Larwood, quickly taken up by Joe Shepard. Larwood having some extra words in after the play. 
probably going to be discussing his uh, discussing his post game dinner plans with the opposition. Face off going to be coming here to the left of Joe Shepard. Going to be Noel Robinson and Philip Wong. Good takeaway there by Jackson Bond. Sticked away, though, by Moriarty. Mississippi able to keep it back in. Phillip Wong with the puck. Looking for a quick shot. Oh, goodness. No goal on the play. Jackson Vaughn making contact with Moriarty. Scary situation there with the skate coming up. Getting a replay of the play right here. Jackson Vaughn looking for that initial shot. Luckily, the skate didn't get up further than that, but everyone's safe on the play. That's all that matters here. Faceoff going to go back outside of the zone, I believe, due to the net coming off the moorings. So it looks like it's going to be Robinson and Wong back in the faceoff dot. Speaking of Wong, he is Baton Rouge's pest of the game. Oh, poor yeah, guy. poor guy. Baton Rouge winning the faceoff, skating across the slot, then taking it back up behind Moriarty. Going to try to get a play set up, breaking out of their own zone. Baton Rouge taking it up the near side boards, passed up to Graham. Graham, far side pass over. That's offside. I, that was offsides to me. I don't know what the linesman might have been looking at there. But non-call regardless, Mississippi taking the puck out of their own zone, passing it up by the Seawolves bench, then Lucas Helen dumping it back in, being covered up by Moriarty. is going to kill the play, so we'll have a face-off, I believe, here to the left of Moriarty. Dalton Anderson in the face-off dot. Kuznets off to his left. Face off one by Mississippi, taken back over by Anderson. Anderson dumping it back in. Pass rimmed around the boards over to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov trying to get a pass out right to the top of the left circle. Not No one's there to take it. Taken away by Baton Rouge. Dumping the puck far into the Seawolves territory behind the net. Scotch Rock and Mullins battling for the puck in the corner. Schrock taking the puck, looking for a quick wraparound chance. Kicked aside by Joe Shepard. Taken away by Connor Lind. Lind battling back in. Skating right through it near himself. Going coast to coast here almost. Good pass opportunity not to be taken over by Kuznetsov. Trying to dump the puck back in. Backhanded. Taken over by Lind. In the left corner. Baton Rouge able to get the puck out of their own zone. Going to Dump it down across, taking it back over. I believe that's Kuznetsov over to Pace. Pace passing over right in front of the Seawolves bench. Good cross size pass over to Liceo, but not able to take it. Baton Rouge going to dump it back out of their own zone. Puck was kind of stuck there in limbo in the neutral zone there for a minute. Seawolves dumping the puck back down the ice. Icing is waved off. Not sure if it could have touched one of the Baton Rouge players or there was little to no effort to make the play on it, but... Regardless, Baton Rouge dumping the puck back into Seawolves territory. Clusat passing it back over to Lissio. Lissio dumping it back over, taken by Justin Barr. Barr coming in with a quick shot on net. Not sure exactly what happened on the end there. Rebound, obviously, but we're going to have a stoppage of play. And I believe the net come off? Yeah, that's what it appears. No. So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your schedule maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair.
All right, the Seawolves fans were back. Off the faceoff, looks as if Baton Rouge won it, and Puck going to be shot into the Baton Rouge bench, going to cause another stoppage of play. And that was our third and final media timeout, by the way. That was our third and final media timeout. It we was, weren't sure exactly what happened, and then they cut to commercial. It was it was just awkward. Yeah, I don't know if the net come off the moorings or what. Good look at the Seawolves bench. Head coach Dustin Skinner back there leading our Seawolves in. Done a great job from taking over this season. Seawolves battling back behind the net. Matinak taking the puck, dumping it back down over. Pass over to Helland. Helland over to the left, right side circle. Good pass opportunity to Jackson Bond. Philip Wong passing over to Matinak. Matinak looking for a quick shot on net. Oh, goodness. Great poke check by Moriarty. Delayed penalty coming up. That was going to be a tripping. Uh, that will be a tripping against the Baton Rouge Zydeco bringing us. Oh, cross, cross checking. It, it don't matter. It's a penalty, and it's going to take us into a uh, Gulf Coast Firestone power play. That it be, Derek. That it be. Face off going to be coming to the right of Moriarty. Seawolf's first power play chance of the night. Special teams, special plays, and special players. Uh, looks like we've got Dmitry Kuznetsov, Lucas Helling, Connor Lynn, Justin Barr. And the Mississippi Prowlers. <laughs> yeah, check that out. <laughs> Face-off one by Mississippi. And Dalton <laughs> Anderson. I can't even think now. <laughs> Shot on net, I believe, by Kuznetsov, taken over by Dalton Anderson. Referee kind of getting in the way there. we got another... Little scuffle there. Pass back over the right side. Looking for a quick shot. Going to pass it up. Quick shot on that. Going to go just wide. Yeah, that scuffle was uh, Lucas Helen and Michael Haskins. Dmitry Kuznetsov. Puck at the top of the circle. Pass over to Lynn. Lynn the quick shot. He shoots and scores! scores! Nice. One for one on the power play tonight. Seawolves jumping out to a one nothing lead. And it looks like it's going to come off of a uh, Lucas Helen deflection. Lucas Helen leading the line back to the bench. Typically shows who got that goal. So right now we'll credit it with Lucas Helen. Wait on the official scoring to come through. And Lucas Helen with the assist from Connor Lynn and Dmitry Kuznetsov. Lucas Helen, a fan favorite in Baton Rouge, putting the first goal on the board. <laughs> and he's still pretty. <laughs> pretty goal from a pretty man. <laughs> Mississippi taking the puck back across, taken away by Baton Rouge, trying to dump it back through. That'll be uh, Omnitech icing, bringing the puck back into the Seawolf zone. Face-off going to come here to the left of Joe Shepard. Philip Wong in the face-off dot going against Tyler Larwood. The two pests of the game. <laughs> what a matchup. Quick failed hand pass. Matt Stoyle looking for a quick shot. Not able to get through. Blocked away by Baton Rouge. Going to dump the puck back into the Seawolf zone. Taken away by Connor Lind. Lynn looking for an outlet pass over to Stoya. Connects. Stoya skating over the Raisin Canes logo at center ice. Quick shot by Jackson Bond. Stick to side by Moriarty. Kind of yeah. awkward bounce there going back towards the net. Yeah, we had a rolling puck. I wonder if they froze their pucks like they're supposed to. It's a good old weekly ritual here at the Mississippi Seawolves office, making sure we have enough pucks frozen. Jackson Bond looking for another quick shot. Loses his stick on the play. Mississippi, great shot. Kicked aside by Moriarty. Another shot, this time gloved. And it will stop the play. Justin Barn, the faceoff dot. Hugo Coach to his left. Faceoff one by Baton Rouge. 
Michael Haskins with the puck behind his own net. Battle with Lissio. Good poke check by Koch. Baton Rouge still able to get it away. Trying to skate up the far side boards. Good intercept opportunity not to be taken away this time. Center ice taken away by Hugo Koch. Quick check into the boards by Alexanian. MJ Graham looking for a little cross ice pass. Kind of awkwardly taken, but still taken by Baton Rouge. Regardless, good little opportunity here. Delayed penalty coming up. Looks like against the Seawolves. So Baton Rouge skating. Empty net with the extra attacker on. MJ Graham with a quick shot taken by Mississippi to stop the play. And Hugo Koch is receiving two minutes for roughing. Oh, wow. It's kind of an awkward penalty. Yeah, and, you know. Hard to say not seeing should, what caused it. It but should have been offset. And no, I, I mean, I've seen them sitting there going back and forward. And, and Normally roughing, you take both of them. Right. Unless something's like truly egregious. But regardless, Seals on the glass doctor penalty kill. Baton Rouge top of the left circle. Dropping it back off, trying to find an open lane. Pass over to Chirac. Chirac looking for a lane, not there. Passing it back over, quick shot on net. MJ Graham looking for the rebound. Not able to get it. Chirac still with the puck. Quick shot on net. Looks like it bounced to the left. I thought it was going over the net. And we're just under a minute left in the first period. Quick shot opportunity. Taken aside by Shepard. Going to kill the play. You ever think about it? You know, it's goalies really have distinct numbers, but with Joe Shepard being the fourth, shouldn't he be wearing four? 44? No, just four. Face off to the right of Shepard. Won by Baton Rouge on a delayed face off. Jackson Bond out pinching. Matt Stoya battling out on Graham. Quick check into the boards. Is there a delayed call? No delayed call on that one. Kind of a. He barely iffy, touched him. Either way, iffy spot. Maybe there is a delayed call. Yep. Oh, wow. It's probably going to be boarding. Just the situation where you are, you got to know where you're at when you're putting a hit on somebody. Touching them or not can be dangerous. So we'll be skating five on three here on the Glass Doctor penalty kill. About 33 seconds left here in the first period. Uh, really confused as to... And it's going to be cross-checking on Connor Lamb. It was going to be something, especially in the way he got hit. I was going to say we still got four guys out. We can only that's have what, three. That's what I was looking at, too. See, the team even had the number four in their mind, Derek. <laughs> Face off one by Baton Rouge. Michael Haskins with the puck, passing it back down over. Quick shot on net. I don't think that made it all the way through. Taken back over by Jake Cox, passing back over to Alexanian. Back to Alexanian. Quick shot on net. Going to go wide. Back over to Haskins. Haskins back to Alexanian. Quick shot. Again, going to go just wide. Five seconds left in the first period. Baton Rouge looking for another quick opportunity. Oh, my goodness. What a Great save. Great glove save. What a save. Great scoring opportunity. Not able to get it away. Shep with the amazing save. We have a few players having a few words. After the play, it looks like Haskins and not really sure who the... Lucas Helen. Was it Lucas? And i seen Haskins with a little cheap shot there at the end. Well, Haskins got a stick to the face inadvertently there on the end, so possibly returning the favor. But end of the first period, the score, Col or, excuse me, Columbus, I got my head thinking about Wednesday. Baton Rouge, zero, your Seawolves, one to end this first period. Fans, stay tuned. We'll be right back here for the first re period recap here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. 
Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone, and uh, just letting you guys know, we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go. I feel like I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime, and I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder, and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on, then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help you pick out a floor plan. You would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations, rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours. I've had so many people that's asked me who built my house. Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast. That's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back, so come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Here we go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill.
Welcome back, Seawolves fans. The Seawolves Broadcast Network. First intermission, Josh Law and Derek Ladner. Seawolves out to a one nothing lead after a pretty physical first period. Yeah, uh, it started off with a uh, pass from Dmitry Kuznetsov to Connor Lynn. Connor Lynn with the shot deflected by Lucas Helen. Lucas Helen, everyone knows Baton Rouge, Zydeco's number one player, number one in their hearts. So. And, and, you know, to end the uh, first period – was a heck of a save by Joe Shepard. Oh, that was wide open net. Baton Rouge Zydeco player right there, but Shep able to get the glove over it and put it away. Well, he had a uh, Zydeco on each side of him, right? I think it was Michael Haskins on one side, was it? And then I didn't see the yeah, other player. It, it was but. Michael Haskins on the back side, and that's where that little scuffle came from when Michael dove in trying to grab the puck and slide it in the net, right? Yeah. And uh, that's that's when the Lucas Hell and Michael Haskins little scuffle happened. Uh, starting off the second period, five on three, Connor Lynn hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct and a cross-checking at the end of that first period. I'm assuming he had a few choice words on the way to the box to earn that UC. Well, and, and you know, from, from our view of that penalty, it didn't look – Severe enough to get that penalty. I guess when when the LeBron James flop happened and the guy kind of just fell on the ice, you know. It didn't look severe enough, but it's the situation of where you are when you give that hit. And, you know, it doesn't take much for a player to fall forward in that situation. That, that could be a bad spot to land uh, right there next to the boards. Um, so the way I look at it, you know, not a great call in my opinion, but the referees I think are going safe about it on that call. Trying to see how long we're going to be five on three for. Well, we've got the penalty by um, so Hugo probably Koch. 40, 40 seconds, roughly forty. Uh, well, Hugo Koch's penalty has to expire, and once his expires, Connor Lynn's second penalty will then start. Three penalties can't start at the same time. All right. Okay. So it'll be ultimately probably almost four minutes of. Close to four minutes of five on three, because uh, there'll be another play on there serving uh, Connor's second penalty too. Gotcha. Just unfortunate rules of hockey. I, I didn't know that till before this year. I thought you know all penalties start at the same time, but only two can be active at once. So once Hugo's will start, one of his two will then kick in um, so, on the so fly. For instance, Hugo would serve two minutes of, you know, one of Connor's minors? No, so Hugo will serve his penalty. When his penalty expires, he'll go on the fly, but there'll still be two others. There'll be three players in the box. Right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But one of Lynn's penalties will not start until Hugo's expires. Hockey, or, God hockey forbid, one, a power play goal. Hockey 101 here with Josh Law. Learn something new every time I see you. Well, I do as well, whether it's movie knowledge or hockey, hockey knowledge. Yeah, we're going to stick to hockey tonight. You never know. Things the stranger things have happened. Stranger yeah. Things, great TV show on Netflix. And look, Check shots on goal. We're neck to neck, twelve and twelve. Twelve and twelve. <laughs> it's to me, it's been a great period. The only really thing is the puck's been bouncing quite a bit. Just players on both ends not able to really corral the puck at all. So let me ask you that first period. What did you see in Joe Pace? Disciplined, and I think he's done a really good job of blocking shots and trying to get you know play the puck and, and putting his body in front of him like he's always done you know I uh I showed up today at the uh, Coliseum to do a few things and I watched Joe practice a little bit and I was kind of amazed you know I just need some rest I mean get back in there get your mental state where you need to be and um you know everyone gets burnt out I I, I get burnt out my day job every day and yeah. it's just a little break will do you some good and so Looking forward to see good things by Joe Pace this weekend. Absolutely. Disciplined and good things. Good things with discipline. We're cooking with peanut oil. Great plays. <laughs> great players. Or no, special teams, special players, and special plays. <laughs> but fans, we'll step away here one more time. We'll be back with the opening face-off for the second period here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your schedule maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair.
like I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime, and I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on then we can build on it for you we'll help you find a floor plan and customize it whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat we would help you pick out a floor plan you would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours i've had so many people that's asked me who built my house Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is trust and we want you to know that we're here for you throughout the process. We're right here by your side and that the house that you envision when you first walk in and meet with a designer, that's the house you're going to get whenever you finish the process and you move in. Here we go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. All right, Seawolves fans, welcome to some second period action, skating five on three. Baton Rouge winning the opening faceoff. Curtis Hansen taking the puck over the blue line, skating back into the right of Joe Shepard. Pass over to Larwood, referee once again in the way, stopping the puck, but Larwood able to take it back. Puck back over to Chirac, Chirac passing it back over to Graham, Graham back over to Chirac, Chirac back over to... Katola shot on that by Larwood. And we're skating five on four now. So not sure what's going on with this. And we have another stoppage of play. Pretty sure Connor Lynn's is going to be four minutes, two minutes, and two minutes consecutive. That's you're correct on that. <laughs> That's what I thought. A while I'm thinking ago. of That's if it's I, two separate players or three separate players with penalties. So that's on me. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought a while ago, but seems you were you were kind of zoned in on it. So <laughs> I was thinking of three different players with yeah. three different penalties. Yeah, you were right on that. That that's on me. Yeah. So five on four. Puck back back behind. The Zydeco net and Seals battling shorthanded trying to get something going. Good takeaway. Gonna just dump the puck back down into the Zydeco territory. Pass dropped off by Catola, but it's Justin Barr. 
trying to skate there with him. Good poke check. Good no call playing the puck there, and unfortunately trips him. Jackson Bond going to take the puck back into our own zone, killing off more of this penalty. Just dump it down the ice. Baton Rouge taking the puck on the fly. Dump back to Haskins. Haskins with the puck taken away by Mississippi. Dumping it out of their own zone. Going to continue to kill off more time. Also want to add that first period was brought to you by Glass Doctors. Glass Doctors. First period sponsor as well as our penalty kill sponsor. Matt Stoyle with a the check there in the corner. Puck trying to be taken away, I believe, by Lucio. Baton Rouge behind their own net, having trouble getting back out of their own zone. A little fake out, going to pass it up the near side. Boards back to Alex Sanyan. Back to Jake Cox. Cox going to take the puck over the bottom of the circle, passing over to Larwood. Larwood trying for a pass back over across the slot, not to be taken there. Larwood with the, back of the, the puck back at the top of the circle. Baton Rouge still trying to deke in and try to find an open lane for a shot. Nothing there. Ooh, shot on net. Going to hit the dashers behind it, bounce back out, but hit the net and move back towards the boards. Baton Rouge still with the puck. About 18 seconds left on the penalty kill. Anderson trying to find the puck, looking up, getting lost in the lights. Puck's going to end up taking back down. Lard with the puck. <laughs> the ice monster grabbed him right there. Sniper. <coughs> and we are five on five. Five on five hockey. Baton Rouge trying to take it out of their own zone across center ice. Philip Wong battling with Noah Robinson. Robinson looking for a quick shot or a, just a pass off the board. He's going to go wide. Ozilish keeping the puck in for Baton Rouge. Over to Curtis Hansen. Hanson for a pass out. Quick shot. Not able to make it there to the net. Jackson Bond skating through. Going to take over the puck. Looking for a quick backhanded opportunity. Kicked aside by Moriarty. Good poke check there to keep out of the Seawolf zone. Mississippi fighting for ownership of the puck. Quick shot on net by Alicio. Right to that magnet behind the logo on the crest of the Zydeco's jerseys. Derek, how many times have you been to the Raising Canes River Center? Mm, twice. Twice? Does it not sit well with you they don't serve Raising Canes there? No. Yeah. <laughs> Mississippi <laughs> winning the faceoff, taking it back over right around the red line. Back and forth. Lissio with a quick pass. Looking for a quick shot opportunity on a one-timer over to Coach, but Coach not able to get it. Pack and Puck. Yes, that. Puck was passed, but not able to be taken up. The laid off sides called back. Puck's going to get dumped back into the Seawolf zone, taken back over. Kind of a scary pass there right in front of the net over to Clusot, not able to take it. Baton Rouge with possession of the puck. Losing it back over to Mississippi. Going to try a little dump and chase back deep into Zydeco territory. Three Seawolves <laughs> battling in against two Zydeco defensemen. Good stoppage there. <laughs> Good idea by Kuznetsov. Not really enough there on the pass to get something going. Mississippi trying for another dump and chase opportunity. Not taken there. Good little stick work there by Anderson. Although not able to take the puck away. Baton Rouge going to dump the puck back down, taking over by Mississippi right around our own blue line. Anderson trying with another pass, again blocked by the Baton Rouge defense. Almost a hand pass there, but 
Looks like it was touched up by Baton Rouge negating that call. Mississippi taking the puck just on the other side of the red line, dumping it back into Baton Rouge territory. Taken over by Sirotson. And back over to Haskins. Haskins back over to Sirotson on the far side boards. Skating through neutral ice, dumping the puck around the red line. In on net, going to be taken up essentially by Shep, but he chooses not to cover it to freeze the play. Puck stops behind the net, taken back over by Baton Rouge. Philip Wong trying to poke check to take it back in, taken over by Baton Rouge. Right around the slot, and offsides is the call. And this will take us to our first media timeout of the second period. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. You're on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Ricky. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back. Back in the game. Back in motion. Back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienville Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. All right, welcome back, Seawolves fans. Coming back from the first media timeout of the period. We're going to have a face-off in the neutral zone on the near side boards. False start. Philip Wong kicked out of the face-off circle. In comes Matt Stoya. Curtis Hansen taking the puck. Quick shot by Baton Rouge. Going to go wide right of the net. Connor Lynn battling in deep. Good opportunity. They shoot and score. Curtis Hansen, quick backhanded opportunity off the outlet pass from the top of the slot. Curtis Hansen blowing a kiss to somebody. So that will even this game up at one apiece. It's going to be a goal by Curtis Hansen, assisted by Nick Catola and Bradley Richardson. Take another look here. Yep, Hansen just right place at the right time. Quick outlet pass down through the slot. And got it past Joe Shepard. So tied up at one here in the second period. Baton Rouge winning the face off. Taking it back up in the slot, skating back up. Another quick shot, going to go wide of the net. I don't know if that went through the crease area, but regardless, did not enter the net. So Mississippi still battling here. Hugo Koch had his stick taken away, looking to the referee for a call, none coming. Baton Rouge skating back in, Jake Cox and Klusat. Hippolyte Smith taking the puck in for Baton Rouge, leaving it back, but taken away by Mississippi. Crowd back by Hippolyte Smith. Justin Barr with the puck. Someone's stick just went flying across the ice. Joe Pace. Good diving play. Fans wanting some sort of call somewhere. Nothing coming. Delayed penalty against Baton Rouge, though. Mississippi taking the puck across center ice into the Zydeco zone. It's Hugo Koch looking for the opportunity. Puck still loose. Referee finally going to blow the whistle dead and looks to be a high stick. Yeah, it's going to take us to another Gulf Coast Firestone power play. That's where our goal came across last time was off of a power play. And you got to make every opportunity of those that you can. Oh, so it's going to be Edgar's Ozilish, two minutes for interference. We see the 
prowlers and Zydeco graphic once again. Oh, man. We've all been there. We've all done it. 20% on the power play. And they changed it. They heard you, Josh. <laughs> Just a little constructive criticism. We take it either way. There's always room for improvement. Mr. Furtado over in Baton Rouge. Faceoff's going to be to the right of Moriarty. Seawolves on the Gulf Coast Firestone power play. And it's been changed from Ozilich to Scott Chirac is now in the penalty box, serving the two-minute penalty. Faceoff initially won by Mississippi, taken away by Haskins. Haskins dumping the puck back down, taken away by Noah Robinson. Robinson with a quick shot and a glove save by Joe Shepard. Short-handed opportunity for Baton Rouge, Mississippi taking it back up. Pass across for Portillo not to be taken. Philip Wong with the puck passing it back over for Stoya. Stoya walking the line, looking for a lane to either pass or shoot. No one there. Passing it back across for Mississippi. Going to take the shot. Not sure if it went off the bar or missed the net completely, but Mississippi still with the puck. Philip Wong, bottom circle, passing it back over to Jackson Bond. Bond at the top of the logo. Matt Stoya looking for his signature slap shot. Oh. Good shot there. It's off the post. Matt Stoya still with the puck looking over at Jackson Bond. Another quick shot <laughs> taken away by Baton Rouge and cleared down the ice. Baton Rouge going to be looking for a line change. Oh, Lord. Psych. <laughs> I think Shep just psyched himself out on that pass. <laughs> nah, he knew what he was doing. Baton Rouge successfully able to dump the puck out. Once again, taken back over by Connor Lind. Lind skating back through across in front of the Zydeco bench. Skating back through into Zydeco territory, stopping up at the top of the circle. Pass over quick. A little pass attempt wrap around by Mississippi, looking for an open passing lane up top. Back over for Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov with a shot on net. Going to be stopped away by Moriarty. Justin Barr taking the puck along with, I believe, Lucas Helland. Down there, Seals take the puck. Kuznetsov wanting the pass. Back over to Helland. Helland over to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov with a shot. Not able to get through to the net. Baton Rouge able to successfully clear out. Three seconds left here on the penalty. And Baton Rouge now at full strength. Baton Rouge skating back in, trying to get some sort of play start started. Stopped by the Mississippi defense. Mississippi taking the puck out of their own zone across the red line, skating across the Baton Rouge blue line into their own territory. Kuznetsov back down deep, fighting for it. There's a loose stick down there. Good wraparound chance, and the net is off the moorings. It's off the moorings. I've never seen a team have so many issues with the net like Baton Rouge. And fans, this will take us to our second media timeout of the game. Of the period, excuse me. We'll be right back here on the Seawall Broadcast Network. Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any, anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast. That's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back, so come out and see them. Thanks, guys.
Let's see Wolves fans face off to the right of Moriarty, won by Baton Rouge. Battling back in. Stolia trying to stop it, taken away by Cox. I'm going to dump the puck back into the Seawolf zone. Great scoring chance on the wraparound opportunity taken up by Shepard. Huge opportunity there. And looks like Baton Rouge fans are wanting something for the net coming off, but just a few seconds ago their net came off. I don't know if they're using – like the moorings we use go pretty deep into the ice. It seems like barely any contact knocks theirs off. And we are heading to a Glass Doctor penalty kill. Matt Stoy in the penalty box. Two minutes for slashing. He didn't mean to. Face-off's going to be coming to the left of Shep. Philip Wong in the face-off dot. So, you know, tomorrow night we're at walk-ons. Great film. Watch party at walk-ons. Good intercept. Jackson Vaughn skating back in, looking for a quick shot opportunity. May end up dumping it back out of the Zydeco zone. Trying to kill off some more time on this glass doctor penalty Ooh, kill. Big Good hit. check into the and boards. And we've got a delay penalty. I think they're going to call interference, the puck not being there. He can't make contact, but not sure who initiated what, but it looks as if Jackson Bond's going to be going. I'm going to call interference most likely. Gatola passing back over to Graham, not able to take it. Puck will go out of play on that, and it will be interference against Jackson Bond. Yep, so right there the puck was nowhere near the play and got to let up. So back to five on three hockey. Face off coming to the right of Shepard. Face off one initially by Barr, but taken back over by Baton Rouge. Larwood behind the net, passing it over. I believe that's to Graham. Graham, pass intercepted by Mississippi. Lynn not able to get all of it out. Intercepted by Baton Rouge. Going to keep it back into the zone. Pass up. That's Haskins. Haskins over. Shot attempt. And puck will go out of play. Tipped out. No penalty coming. Face off to the left of Shepard. Face off one by Baton Rouge, taken back. It was MJ Graham walking the line over to Catola. Catola back over to Graham. Graham passing it over to the left side corner over to Chirac. Chirac skating behind the net, passing back over, back to Chirac. Chirac over to MJ Graham. Graham looking for a shot, quick shot. And they score. Made it right through the five hole. And Puck trickles back behind Shepard, and they're going to knock it in. Referee going to call it a goal. Scott Schrock, the one knocking it back past off the initial MJ Graham shot. So as of right now, two to one Baton Rouge on the power play goal. I think Shepard's arguing that he had the puck covered, but obviously not if it was able to be tapped in like that behind him. Take another look here on the replay. So here's the initial shot saved. Yeah, it had to have been free. Scott Schrock just knocks it clear back into the net. So face off, one by Mississippi, taken back away, and we're going to have another stoppage.
the referee's having a discussion. Captain Justin Barr coming over to see what all the hoopla is about. Still having some further discussions. Again, don't know exactly what were being discussed here. I don't know if Shep was trying to argue goalie interference. How much did you wager, Derek? <laughs> should be five on four. Yeah, that should be the case. Still unclear, <laughs> excuse me, as to what was being discussed. So five on four hockey still here on the glass doctor penalty kill face off won by Mississippi initially taken away by Ozilish. Shot on net taken up by Shepard going to cover it and freeze the play. He'll have a face off here to his right. Justin Barr and Jake Cox back in the faceoff circle. Won by Mississippi. Matt and I going to try to dump the puck around the ice. Taken up by Baton Rouge at the blue line. Baton Rouge top of the left side circle at the top of the blue line. Passing back over. Quick shot on net. Kicked aside by Shepard. Mississippi not able to completely get the puck out. Baton Rouge able to keep it back in. Justin Barr battling there. I believe that's with Matt and I once again. Continuing to kill time, battling there on the boards. Baton Rouge able to keep the puck in. We pass opportunity. Mississippi still trying to clear the puck. Not successful so far, and they finally do. Mississippi will be looking for a line change here on this play. <coughs> Taking it back over by Haskins in his own zone. Cross ice pass over to Larwood. Larwood trying to dump it back in, but taken over by Cox. Cross the blue line. Mississippi able to keep the puck out. Mississippi with the puck behind their own net. Passing over to Jackson Bond. Bond skating across the red line. We are at full strength. Five on five hockey. Jackson Bond looking for the wraparound, and once again, the net comes off the moorings. Great opportunity there, but... Net happened to come off once again. It's got me wondering if they're using the, the practice moorings that don't actually get drilled really into the ice. Face off to the right of Moriarty, <laughs> Moriarty won by Mississippi. 
pass up to Helen. Helen looking for a shot. Going to go wide blocked, I believe, in front by a Zydeco player. Passing back over to top of the right circle. Good check on the play. Unfortunately, not, away, not able to take the puck away. Here on the intercepted pass is Lucas Helen. Helen skating through. Good way to stick through. Looking for a pass or a shot opportunity. Passing back in front. And going to be taken up by Moriarty. Face off to left of Moriarty. Anderson in the face off circle. Won by Baton Rouge. Dumping the puck out of, <laughs> excuse me, out of their own zone. Taken up by Madanak. Madanak trying to get it back across. Does so. Back over to Connor Lind. Lind passing back up to Portillo. Portillo going to dump the puck in. Quick glove stop by Moriarty. Not taken down to freeze. Mississippi delayed off sides. Going to have to touch back up before they can come back in. Baton Rouge skating up far side circle for a potential wraparound. Wide open backside net. Luckily, no uh, Zydeco players there. Seawolf's coming away. Kuznetsov out in front taking advantage of the far side pass. Gone weary. Puck down around the left side of the circle. Pass up to Lind. Lind with a quick shot. Going to go just wide and taken back up by Moriarty. A little more than five minutes left here in this second period of play. And this will take us to our third and final media time out of the period. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hey, Seawolves fans. It's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone. And uh, just letting you guys know, we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair. Uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you have 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go. Welcome back, Seawolves fans. Face-off going to take place here to the left of Moriarty. Justin Barr in the face-off circle. Danny Lissio to his right. Face off one by Baton Rouge, taken over by Catola behind his own net. Gonna dump it back in. Joe Pace taking the puck, looking for a pass over to his fellow defenseman. Not able to take it initially on the pass. Mississippi trying to keep in the Baton Rouge zone. Unsuccessful. MJ Graham taking the puck back in. A left side circle. Quick shot. Gonna go just wide of the net. Taken back over by Joe Shepard. Justin Barr, face off here to the right of Shepard. Face off one by Mississippi. Clusot going to take the puck, trying to dump it back down to clear. Does so, but Lucio not able to take it up. Baton Rouge dumping it back in. Larwood taking the puck. Two on one right now for Baton Rouge. Quick shot, going to go wide of the net, backing back around. Taken back over by Justin Barr. Barr skating in. Quick stop. Good idea for a pass. Not able to be taken up by Hugo Koch. Koch skating around behind the Baton Rouge net. Joe Pace right behind him. Going to dump it back in for Pace. Missing him. Mississippi still 
Trying to retain possession of the puck here in the Zydeco zone. No Robinson taking the puck back out, passing it back over and dumped in by Baton Rouge. Elias Thompson skating around. Battling it out with Connor Lynn. Baton Rouge taking it at the top of the far side circle, dumping it back around for Thomas McGuire. Mississippi with possession of the puck, looking for a quick opportunity. Almost there, but not able to get a whole lot of it is Justin Barr. Danny Lissio with a quick shot right through the crease. Joe Pace just missed it. Baton Rouge skating in two on one right now, looking for a quick shot. Good poke check by Joe Shepard. Mississippi taking the puck out of their own zone. I believe that was Pace dropping it back off. Michael Haskins taking the puck away, intercepted by Joe Pace. Then back over to Jackson Bond. Bond looking for a quick scoring opportunity. Nice little stop, wrap around, trying to pass it back, but taken back over by Baton Rouge. He's going to dump the puck down the ice. And I believe they're going to call offside. No. The referee gave the charging signal, but I don't think there's a delayed penalty here. I'm going to say that was an offside going back into the Zydeco zone on that face-off. Face-off to left of Moriarty. Face-off won initially by Philip Wong, taken away by Baton Rouge, skating up. Good defense right there to keep the puck out of the net. Blake Sewardson trying to take it away on a breakaway. Baton Rouge taking the puck, delayed penalty called. We'll be going back onto a Gulf Coast Firestone power play, hooking the call. And that's going to be hooking on Hippolyte Smith. Hippolyte Smith obviously disagreeing <laughs> with the call. He's just wanting a little extra explanation. See, you did this with your stick. You can't do that. Did what with a stick? He, like a like a shepherd's rook. And, as Josh Law is going through the motions here, showing me with his water bottle. <laughs> Face off one by Mississippi and Philip Wong back over to Matt Stoya. Stoya again wearing seventy four tonight. Quick shot on net, going to go wide. Battling back in. Puck stayed in by Hugo Koch. Back down, pass up at the top of the circle. Good opportunity, nothing there. Moriarty with another block on the shot attempt by Jackson Bond. Bond going to pass it back over to Koch. Koch over to Stoya. Stoya walking the line, quick shot on net. Going to get deflected wide. Mississippi retaining possession. Stoya skating backwards once again. Slap shot in. Oh, not able to clear it as Baton Rouge whiffing on that. Jake Cox intercepting the pass there, battling through with Jackson Bond. And Baton Rouge will finally clear it out of the, <laughs> out of the zone. You okay over there? No, I'm not. Ooh. Poor pass there by Shepard, but taken back by Mississippi. A minute left here on this Gulf Coast Firestone power play. Skating in fast, Mississippi. Right there, I think just one too many passes taken over by Larwood. Curtis Hansen skating in fast. Quick shot by Larwood. Again, going to go wide, but taken back again. A few good shorthanded attempts by Baton Rouge right here in Mississippi. Going to take it away, but again, not out clearly to anyone. Michael Haskins going to pass the puck back down, and then Baton Rouge will dump it. Less than 30 seconds left here on the power play. Connor Lind skating in, looking for a quick shot. He, he shoots scores! and scores! Wow. Ooh. Connor Lind, coast to coast. Quite the deke on that play. Just kind of let the puck go in by itself. <laughs> no no further effort. Just kind of leave the puck and let it continue on its on its path. Uh, that gets the job done. It's tied at two. <laughs> So, Mississippi, we've got uh, two power play goals tonight. Let's 
See Coach Skinner over there coaching him up. It looked to me as if he gave the sketch. Okay, brother. And a coast to coast Connor Lynn goal. Coast to coast, great radio show back in the day. People calling about their paranormal stories there on the West Coast. Baton Rouge, Scott Schrock fighting for the puck. Was taken away there and then right in the slot area. Puck back behind the Mississippi net. Good check in by Justin Barr. Tristan Clusot. Also battling in Joe Pace. Just everyone putting in the effort right now, trying to keep the, the puck along the boards. 20 seconds left in. And I'm wondering if we're going to have coincidental penalties. If not, Mississippi. No. We are going back onto the Glass Doctor penalty kill. Tristan Clusat, two minutes for holding. Time of the penalty, 1943 of this second period. And I believe Joe Pace is skating towards the box as well. Or he may be just asking for an explanation. No, he's headed to the box. It was uh, see what we got. <coughs> no, we're still well wait, hold on. We got five players. We should only have four. Joe Pace holding. So we've got two holding penalties. And now another penalty is being assessed. Right off the faceoff. Looks like Connor Lind heading to the box. I'm going to assume unsportsmanlike conduct. And they changed it. It's going to be roughing against Tristan Clusot. Holding and, against pace. And unsportsmanlike conduct against Connor Land. Wow. You know, you're not going to have calls go your way at some point. You just got to you, – you're, you're nothing you're going to say is going to change the referee's mind. So this would be that situation where one of these penalties cannot start until one of the others expires. No. We, we went over this. There's three different players with three different penalties. Face-off, one by Mississippi. Matt Stoya able to try to corral it. Baton Rouge, the puck at the top of the circle. Three seconds left in. And Baton Rouge going to get the quick shot off, but nothing thereafter. That'll do it for the second period of play. Score all knotted up at two apiece. Fans, we'll be right back here on the second period recap here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime, and I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder, and what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on, then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. 
Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help you pick out a floor plan. You would work with one of our designers and he would make customizations, rearrange it for you if you wanted to um, help you make the home yours. I've had so many people that's asked me who built my house. Everything that we asked and, and said we wanted, they were willing to listen and go, we'll, we'll make it happen. Not only do we build for our homeowners, we build for their friends, their family. Uh, they even come back to us and build their second and third homes with us. We built, I think it's over 3,500 homes now. Family is important to us. We um, know that the biggest thing about family is trust and we want you to know that we're here for you throughout the process. We're right here by your side and that the house that you envision when you first walk in and meet with a designer, that's the house you're gonna get whenever you finish the process and you move in. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienville Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any, anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Here we go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill.
Welcome back, Seawolves fans, here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Josh Law and Derek Ladner here from the Omnitech War Room at Omnitech in Gulfport. So, tied at two after the second period. Uh, not a whole lot really going on in that period, more so just back and forth, I, I noticed. Too many penalties on our end, especially to end that second period. Yeah, we are two for three, and currently, knock on wood, Baton Rouge is one for ah. eight. All right, let's not say that. Let's let that stay. <laughs> I was just comparing the penalty counts. <laughs> Let's not do that. So uh, three penalties for Baton Rouge against R8 currently. So this third period, we just need to play a more disciplined, disciplined game this next uh, next go around. Yeah, uh, Connor Lynn with the lone goal in the uh, second period, coast to coast. An impressive goal. It just really was. Let the puck go and act like he was still deking around. It just slid right in the net. Just coasted it right on in. Coast to coast. Coast Coasting. to coast. Coast to coast to coast. <laughs> so what do you think about the intensity? Second period. It's been there. I still think we could do probably a little more physically, trying to separate them from the puck. I'd like to see an explosive start to the third period. Just all out explosive. Just full on attack essentially like physically, offensive zone, everything. And the thing with that is, you know, when you're taking your shots, you got to follow them. It's like, you know, basketball, any other sport you shoot. Follow your shots, try to come in through, and you'll have more opportunities uh, come up because of that. And, I mean, we've had a lot of success this year doing that on second chance opportunities here early on. Um, getting back to that, I, I think we'll, we'll be fairly successful. And, you know, defensively, we're getting a stick on the puck, you know, knocking the puck away consistently. You know, downfall to, to the second period, the only downfall other than the penalties – is getting out shot on the goal, right? 14 to 7. And the thing is, we're still doing a good job of blocking those shots, but we need to start blocking those lanes or anticipating where that puck's going to be to try to cut those off and uh, limit opportunities. Like I said, de defensively, not not bad at all. No, no I know? mean, no, I wouldn't say so. I mean, com considering the shots that we have. Or we Let me knock on wood. <laughs> you told me not to do that earlier. I know, and I did it. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, Derek. Uh, but, no, I mean, you know, with the shots that we did give up, uh, we are limiting still quite a few of their chances. And for as many shots as they did get off, the fact that, you know, we're still tied at two says a whole lot about how our defense is playing tonight. Yeah, just we, we've got to take advantage of these offensive opportunities in the third period. You know, there was too many opportunities that we had out of those seven shots that we've got to take advantage of. I think some of the best opportunities we've had tonight were Jackson Bond, some of his breakaways. That one he had – Good stop by the goaltender. The other one, defense just happened to be there. And, and then, you know, take take part of the uh, little wraparound he tried to do, you know, late in the second period where he just slammed on the brakes to try dishing a pass back out, you know. Yeah. And just couldn't get it off. If that was, something like that connects, that's got to go in That the was great thinking. You know, great thinking because, you know, they anticipate his wraparounds every single time because he's so quick. He can get around before the goalie has time to say, hey, you know, just well, that the, quick. <laughs> the problem here is in Baton Rouge, he gets the wraparound successfully. Either it's going to go in, it's going to get knocked away, or the net's, net's going to come off. Right. But, you know, every barn has their own deals and um, just playing the playing the hand that you're dealt. But, no, I'm looking forward to this third period. I think if, like you said, we come out guns a-blazing, full steam, we've got a lot of things to look forward to in this period. But fans, stay tuned. We'll be back here for the opening face-off, the third period on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back. back. All right, fans, welcome back. Opening face-off of the third period. Noah Robinson, Justin Barr, one back over by the Zydeco. Skating five on three following the penalties here at the end of the second period. Justin Barr doing well, trying to limit that breakout into the Seawolf zone. Baton Rouge skating back across for Scott Schrock, dropping it back for MJ Graham. Graham going to be passing it over to Katola. Katola back to Graham. Looking for an opening passing lane. Shot by Katola. Going to go wide. Taken back up by Chirac. Passing it back across. Good wraparound attempt right there. They shoot and score. 
Not sure the exact player on this goal. We'll get a call for you here momentarily. But that would be another power play goal. And it looks to be Noah Robinson leading out the, the line up to the, to the bench for the handshakes and headed back to center ice for the faceoff. Noah Robinson from Curtis Hansen and Michael Haskins. So another one of those I'm going to call dirty goals as in far as crashing the net and getting to the loose puck, but Baton Rouge up 3-2 to two over the Seawolves here currently. Here early in the third period, Michael Haskins with the puck. Seawolves still skating 5 on 4. Larwood breaking back down in, leaving a puck over for Bradley Richardson. Richardson's over to Haskins. Haskins passing the puck back over to the top of the left circle. Right side circle, excuse me. Passing back over to Cox, who dumps it back to Larwood, not able to corral it. Going to have to leave the zone and reset. Larwood leaving it back for Haskins. In turn, circling back in behind his own net. Taking it back out now across the slot. Passing across center ice over to Cox. Cox backhanded pass over to Haskins. Haskins in turn dumping it back into the Seawolf zone. Taken up by Lucas Helen. Helen going to dump it back over for Connor Mullins, who's going to try to dump it out. Just out of reach. And 20 seconds remaining on the penalty kill. Good hip check by Joe Pace. Wow, I haven't seen a hip check like that in a long time. That's great effort on that play. Baton Rouge taking it back into the Seawolf zone right on the circle looking for a quick shot taken up by Shepard. Tossing the puck back out to the linesman for the faceoff. Net also coming off the moorings again. <coughs> nice view of our bench there. Great view. Baton Rouge somewhat winning the faceoff kind of battled there. Mississippi trying to dump it out of their own zone. And we're back in full strength. There we back to five on five hockey. Justin Barr battling over in the corner. Taking the puck away. Danny Lissio kind of caught up there, not able to get the stick on the puck. Back down to the Seawolf zone. Going to go off the leg of Matnack. Matnack taking the puck off the leg of Noah Robinson. That's way off sides by a mile. So that will bring the puck back here into the neutral zone for a faceoff. And we do have a final tonight. Looks like Carolina over the Columbus River Dragons 3-2 to two in a shootout. Or vice versa. Regardless, we'll get back to Seawolves hockey here. Seawolves taking the puck back in. In the neutral zone, Mullen's going to dump the puck back in. Baton Rouge taking back over. Kuznetsov off almost with the interception there. Mississippi taking the puck back over to Dalton Anderson. Anderson going to dump the puck into the Zydeco zone at the red line. Taken back over by Moriarty, but going to dump it back for his own defenseman. Seawolves back deep in chasing his Portillo. Lucas Helen battling back in. Baton Rouge skating out of their own zone across neutral ice and the red line. Good hit there by Lucas Helen on Tyler Larwood. Seawolf's player down, and he's hurt. Going to have to wait for Seawolf to gain possession to stop the play. But we will stop it here with the injured player down. Cook. 
couldn't tell if that was Kuznets off. Face off going to come to the right of Joe Shepard following the stoppage. Face off one by Mississippi. Matt Stoya battling back deep with Philip Wong. Baton Rouge able to take the puck and keep it in their own zone. Shot on net. Kind of going to go wide, but kicked aside by Joe Shepard. Mississippi taken back over the puck. Skating out of their own zone as Madinac dumping it back in. Looking for Matt Stoya, but taken away by Haskins in the Zydeco defense. Philip Wong skating back across, seeing which way Haskins is going to go. He's going to dish it down to MJ Graham. MJ going to take it back across the blue line, passing it intercepted by Jackson Bond. MJ Graham looking for another quick shot, going to be sticked aside, I believe, by Lucas Helen. Seawolf taking it back out of their own zone across the blue line. Passing it up and over to Jackson Bond. Bond looking for a backhanded shot. Not going to go there. Goaltender's going to go down there. And I can't stand it when goaltenders do that. You're making a shot attempt knowing you're going to get hit and then act like you were completely not at fault. And Jackson Bond knows it. He's, uh... Oh, one hit wonder by Philip Wong. That's a newcomer to Baton Rouge, Narek Alexanian. But that's following the contact with Moriarty, which more incidental than anything else. You know, Bond going for that shot, Moriarty coming out to play it at the same time. I don't I, I find that more fault on the goaltender than anything else, especially to act like he was completely in the defenseless in that situation. Right. And then it's gonna cause something like this, which in this situation, completely unnecessary. We'll take a look back here at this uh, altercation with Philip Wong. You're going to see one hit. Boom. I'm out. Well, that'd be two hits, Derek. <laughs> no. De Wong hitting him, him hitting the ice. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how the penalty soared out here. Joe Pace making a delivery over to the penalty box, handing back equipment to the respective players. Taking a look at the playoffs bracket. So here for the Continental Division, Mississippi will be facing off Columbus. Game one this Wednesday night at 7 at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Carolina Thunderbirds taking on the port here on Prowlers in round one. Then currently in the Empire, three seeds still undecided aside from the Binghamton Black Bears, divisional winners of the Empire this year, waiting to see who they'll play. And fans, we're going to step away here for our first media timeout. Stay tuned. We'll be right back here on the Seagulls Broadcast when Network. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back. Back in the game. Back in motion. Back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side. Fans apologize for that stoppage. Miss Q from the Baton Rouge broadcast. Thought they were going to a media break. We'll have a face off here to the right of Moriarty following the penalties. Currently up. It's for Baton Rouge, number 14, Thomas McGuire. Two minutes for roughing, five minutes for fighting. Five minutes for fighting for Matt Soya. Five minutes for fighting for Narek Alexanian. And five minutes for fighting for Philip Wong. So whole myriad of penalties there on this last play. Mississippi battling for the puck there behind the net. Baton Rouge going to dump it back down in. Played by Joseph Shepard. Yeah, that Thomas McGuire also got a roughing.
That's why we've got five on four. Gulf Coast Firestone power play. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what was going on here. but Don't worry, I got you. I appreciate it, Derek. What would I do without you? Oh, shot on Oh, that. man, Looking that was too close. Another deflection goal possibility for Lucas Helland. Madanak with the puck at the top of the slot, looking for a quick shot over to Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov trying to go over the right shoulder of Moriarty. Baton Rouge is going to clear the puck back down. Breakaway shot. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Noah Robinson with another breakaway attempt on the shorthanded side of the play. Robinson pinning the puck up against the board, trying to kill off some time on this penalty. Mississippi able to take it back. Back behind their own net. Battled out by Curtis Hansen. Mississippi going to pass the puck back out to Lucas Helland over the red line. Lucas Helland by himself waiting for Mississippi on the change. Mississippi taking the puck back in. Three on two looking for a quick shot and a quick save by John Moriarty. And this will take us to our first media timeout of the period. Stay tuned, fans. We'll be right back here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone. And uh, just letting you guys know, we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six-month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go. I feel like I got the best value at Heritage Homes. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions that I plan on making in my lifetime. And I feel like I got the best price for what I wanted. I love my house. <laughs> We're a building a lot home builder. And what that means is if you own your property or if you're looking for property to build on, then we can build on it for you. We'll help you find a floor plan and customize it. Whether you were to come in or if you were to go online and, and see our website and talk to us on the live chat, we would help. All right, welcome back, fans. Face off here to the left of Moriarty. Quick shot just going over the net. Lucas Helen with the puck on the top side circle. Looking for a quick passing lane pass over to Connor Mullins. Mullins over a pack. Quick pack shot over to Jackson Bond. And a quick glove save by Moriarty. So we'll have a face off again here to the right side of the Zydeco goalkeeper. Face off one again by Mississippi, taken over by Jackson Bond. Bond looking for a shooting lane. Blocked in front by Zydeco traffic. Mississippi able to keep the puck in the Zydeco zone. Momentarily kicked out by Baton Rouge. MJ Graham skating out right in front. Playing the puck. Kicked out by Joe Shepard. Taken back over by Mississippi behind their own net. Roughly 14 seconds left here on the Gulf Coast Firestone power play. Pass across. No one there to take it. Taken over by Jackson Bond. Bond trying to get it back over. Taken over by MJ Graham. Back to five on five hockey. Michael Haskins with the puck, passing it back over to Graham. Graham looking for a quick pass opportunity across the slot, intercepted by Mullins, and we're going to have a stoppage of play. Delayed penalty coming up. Flashing. Waiting to see the call on the play. Jackson Bond. Back here on a glass doctor penalty kill.
Face off to the right of Joe Shepard. One by Mississippi initially taken over by Baton Rouge. Looking for a shot on net. Joe Pace diving over trying to block the attempt. Jay Graham taking the puck back up for Haskins. Haskins back to Graham. Marwood looking for an opening pass. Takes it from Haskins. Quick shot on net. Kicked aside and then dumped cleared by Justin Barr. Baton Rouge skating back out across the red line is Tyler Larwood. Larwood passing over to MJ Graham. Graham battled with, with Matanak and Alessio. Baton Rouge taking back owner of the shot. Hit the side of the net. Yeah, I know my words didn't make sense there. <laughs> my brain's operating faster than my mouth right now. Danny Alessio, good defense here. Trying to kick the puck out. Does so. Continues to take it. And oh, we've got to have a delayed penalty. Delayed there, huh? penalty coming up. Tripping should be the call. We'll skate four on four. It should be on MJ Graham. <coughs> that penalty box is occupied heavily, isn't it? <laughs> Very much so. And I can tell you announcing down there wasn't easy when you had some bad blood going on between because you've got open areas behind both sides. Face off coming to the right of John Moriarty following the MJ Graham tripping call. We'll skate four on four. Good look at Hugo Koch. Hugo Koch and Scott Schrock talking back and forth. Shout out to Hugo Koch and Joachim Nielsen making the all-rookie team this year. Great for them. Great season they've had so far here. First year here. First year in the pros. Hugo Koch, fancy little deke, taken back over by Baton Rouge. Koch looking to intercept once again, but taken back over by Noah Robinson. Lucas Helen battling back deep. And Lucas has been playing defense quite often these last few games. Baton Rouge not able to corral that initial pass up the blue line. Finally taking it back over is Scott Chirac. Chirac looking for a quick opportunity. No goal. Kick save by Joe Shepard. Gatol and Chirac exchanging the puck back. Caught around the feet. <laughs> Not able to really do much. Ooh. Tried to take the puck away himself. Not able to get it. Sewell's going to dump the puck back down for Connor Lind, I believe. Not able to get a hold of it. Baton Rouge taking the puck back down into the Seawolves zone. And we're going to have a stoppage. Come on, cameraman. I wonder if there's an inadvertent whistle if they're having the face-off back at the center ice face-off dot. <coughs> I think the official was caught off guard as an icing. Face off one by Mississippi. Madanak taking the puck back over. Passing it over to Klusat. Baton Rouge dumping the puck back in their own zone. Quick deke by Madanak taking the puck away. Outlet pass up. You know, miss. And I think they were initially thinking this was going to go for an icing. Baton Rouge clearing the puck out. 
as Baton Rouge is currently still on a penalty kill. So on a brief Gulf Coast Firestone power play are your Seawolves. Justin Barr skating behind the net. Nearly taken back over. Dmitry Kuznetsov off with the puck at the red line. Passing back over to Justin Barr. Barr to Lissio. Lissio back to Barr looking for a quick shot. And it's going to be corralled by Moriarty. Going to bring a stoppage of play. Three seconds roughly left on the Gulf Coast Firestone power play. And that should take us to a media timeout. And that it will. We'll be back here shortly here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. What's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people. Face off back to the right of Moriarty, won by the Seawolf, shot by Matt Stoy is going to go just wide of the net, taken back by Jackson Bond. Skating back behind the net, passing it back down. Mississippi just losing it, taken away by Baton Rouge. MJ Graham able to dump the puck back out. Mississippi behind their own net, passing it back out to Jackson Bond. Bond trying to leave it for Philip Wong, not able to corral Matt Stoya in chase of Michael Haskins. Mississippi dumping the puck back out once again. Taken over by Philip Wong. Wong trying an outlet pass over to Matt Stoya. Initially taken away. Lucas Helen with a quick bounce pass across the boards over to Jackson Bond, but going to miss it. Baton Rouge taking the puck out of their own zone, skating in two on one. Nice. It's a good deke there. They shoot and score on the opportunity coming back. That's going to be Noah Hippolyte Smith with the goal. So that's going to be Hippolyte Smith from Michael Haskins. Baton Rouge up to a 4 to 2 lead. Seals back into the Zydeco zone, taken back across by Tyler Larwood, passing it back over to Elias Thompson, chasing back deep for the Seawolves, Connor Mullins and Tristan Clusat. Trying to dump the puck out successfully, taken back over by Baton Rouge at the blue line. Thomas McGuire with the puck behind his own net. Dmitry Kuznetsov back deep in chase. McGuire passing the puck out. Good defense there on the boards. Noah Robinson able to take the puck away. However, Tristan Clusat and Larwood battling it out along with Dalton Anderson taking and dumping the puck back out. Mississippi taking the puck out. Offsides not called. Not able to keep it in. Mississippi going to have to regather. Touch back up offsides. Baton Rouge taking possession behind their own net. Skating around the near side circle and across the blue line. Thomas McGuire. Nice little deke right on in, takes a shot, misses the net. Matanak skating up the far side boards across the red line. Offsides will be the call just right there. So 
That'll bring us another stoppage on the offsides. Matanag, I'm not sure, cares for the call, but was one of those close ones. Face off one by Mississippi, going to dump it back down into the Zydeco territory. Justin Barr back down deep, chasing in. Seawolf, the quick shot, going to bounce back up, caught in by Baton Rouge. Close to a delay of game, but able to get the ricochet off the boards and back into the field of play. Hugo Koch battling back down deep. Seawolf's trying to keep it in. Lissio back to Koch. Koch not able to corral it, taken away by Haskins. Dumping it back down in for the Zydeco players, skating across the red line, back down in. Mississippi going to take control of the puck back over Hugo Koch, leaving it for Justin Barr. Justin Barr skating around the near side circle, looking for a quick shot. Going to go just across the crease and wide left of the net. Baton Rouge skating back in, now two on one. MJ Graham with a quick shot, rebound. Taken away by Mississippi. MJ Graham still working down below, trying to interrupt the Seawolves' breakout attempt. Mississippi passing it back up for Justin Barr. Once again, Barr's going to leave it back down in for Moriarty. And McGuire will take it back for Baton Rouge behind their own net. Jackson Bond with some pressure. Mississippi taking it. Connor Mullins with the interception, passing it back over to Jackson Bond. Bond looking for a quick shot and a quick save by Moriarty. Face off coming to the left of Moriarty following the save. Roughly 6.13 left here in this third period of play. Baton Rouge up 4-2 to two over the Mississippi Seawolves. Baton Rouge wins the face off. Taking the puck back behind their own net. Passing out to Scott Chirac. Chirac now able to take it. Connor Mullins with the quick shot. Going to go just above the net following the deflection attempt by Philip Wong. Matt Stoya with the puck. A little shove back and forth following the stoppage of play. I'm guessing the puck went into one of the benches there. So bring up another stoppage and another face-off. Face off at center ice, one by Mississippi, taken back over by Mullins, I believe. Mississippi trying to battle back in. Connor Lind with the puck taken back over by Baton Rouge, but Jackson Bond interrupting and I dump the puck back out through neutral ice, taken back over by Matt Stoya. Stoya skating back, passing the puck back over to center ice. Interrupted by two Zydeco players, taken over by Jackson Bond. Bond trying to get it back over across ice for a fellow Seawolf. Going to be intercepted by Baton Rouge. Matt Stoya with the puck. Tyler Larwood taking it away, skating across the blue line into Seawolves territory. Quick backhanded shot. No attempt after the kick save. Jackson Bond going to take the pass. Back down the ice. Moriarty coming out, of the play, out to play the puck and going to negate the icing call. Michael Haskins behind the net with the puck, trying to get a breakaway, a breakout attempt started. Excuse me. Justin Portillo, Dalton Anderson. And Kuznetsov out on the forecheck. Baton Rouge skating back out. Noah Robinson with a shot and a glove save by Shepard. And this stoppage will bring us to our third and final media timeout of the game. Fans, stay tuned. We'll be right back here on the Seawolves Broadcast Network.
There we go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. Welcome back, fans. Seawolves going to win that initial face-off, trying to take it out of their own zone, interrupted by Baton Rouge. Kuznets off, trying to get the puck back out, taken over, I believe, by Noah Robinson at the red line, going to dump it back in. Mississippi taking back over. 4.33 left here in the third period of play. Mississippi trying to break out attempt, taken out of their own zone. Madanak on the near side boards, crossing over into neutral zone territory, dumping it at the red line. Stopped out by Moriarty, trying to dump it in the corner. Mississippi going to retain possession of the puck. Kuznetsov with the puck back. Portillo with the backhanded dump. Kicked aside by Alexanian. Baton Rouge begin here two on one. Quick save. Kicked aside by Joe Shepard. Mississippi with the puck. Kuznetsov looking for a breakout. No one there to help. Going to just do a little quick circle around. Going to dump it back in on a dump and chase. Players stopping up. Looked like they were expecting a stoppage coming, but Baton Rouge taking the puck out of their own zone. Dumping it back in for Scott Chirac. Going to be hit aside by Connor Mullins, Mississippi. The puck got caught up along the boards. They were trying to take it out. Mississippi taking the puck back in. Justin Barr and Danny Lissio, and a once again going to be just offsides, bringing a stoppage of play with roughly 328 left here in the third period. Seawolves down 4-2, to two, going to need some quick offensive pressure to try to get back into this game. Face-off won by Justin Barr, going to dump the puck back into the Zydeco zone, coming back around to Chase. Danny Lissio fighting with Ozilish. Justin Barr with the puck, top circle. Pass back over, right over to Connor Mullins with a quick shot, going to go just wide right of the net. Danny Lissio battling back down in the corner, trying to take the puck away. Baton Rouge still battling to keep it in. Hugo Koch with the puck. Seawolves battling back in. Looks like tripped up or stepped on a stick. No call coming. Mississippi barely able to, well, just barely missing, keeping the puck in their own zone. Two forty-two left here in the third period. Philip Wong trying to take the puck out, taken over. That is by Lissio going back for a change this time around. Baton Rouge intercepts at the blue line, coming for a quick shot, and they shoot and score on some goaltender contact. Just lack of defense play. They are caught on a line change. Baton Rouge up to a five-to-two lead. We're gonna have to wait to see. Who gets the goal on this one? Eric Alexanian leading the charge on the handshake line, followed by Thomas McGuire. So wait to see what we have going on here. Credited to Alexanian, assisted by Graham and Noah Robinson at 17.35 of the third period. Following the face-off, Matt Stoya going after somebody here on the far side boards wanting to fight. And that's, excuse me again, Alexanian not wanting to go. And Stoya's going to get the boot, so he'll be done for the night. Go hit the showers just a little early. So just frustrated play right now. Last few goals not going, or not going any way the Seawolves are hoping. So we'll wait to see how these penalties file out, if they're just going to give them a 10-minute misconduct or if there's going to be a, a player loss penalty ensued. So it looks as if we are going to skate five on four, still waiting for the official call on the penalty. Face 
faceoff coming back to the right of Joe Shepard. Unsportsmanlike conduct so far. Yeah, they probably gave him a 10 with that as well. But So somebody's in the box serving, not sure exactly who, but Seawolves back on the Glass Doctor penalty kill. Baton Rouge looking for a quick shot. Again, kicked aside by Joe Shepard. Mississippi going to take the puck and dump it back down the ice. 2.05 remaining here in the third period of play. Baton Rouge regrouping and have a new breakout attempt coming across neutral ice. Good pass attempt taken by Elias Thompson. Thompson taking the puck back behind his own net. Mississippi going to be taking it away only to be intercepted by MJ Graham. Graham passing up. Walking the blue line, looking for either a shooting or a passing lane. Pass quick over. Kicked aside by Shepard, Mississippi, still fighting to get the puck out of the zone. Baton Rouge able to keep it. Thomas McGuire on the right side, looking for a quick shot. Wrap around, shoot, and score. Looks like he kicked it off the back of goaltender Joe Shepard's leg. And the power play goal will persist. Baton Rouge with a 6-2 lead here with... Less than two minutes remaining here in regulation. Keep in mind, fans, tomorrow night we will be broadcasting live from walk-ons in Iberville. Come out and join us. It's always a great environment with great food. Great food, great company, great times. Walk-on's always a fun time. Might have a little scrap here off the face-off. Can't really see. Looks That's like Pinkowski. Pinkowski. And seeing if they're going to go. I think this might be Pinkowski's. Yep, and here we go. It's Pinkowski and... Elias Thompson. Elias Thompson, I think, recently picked up by Baton Rouge from Motor City. And that was a quick step in by the officials. Pinkowski not happy. They stepped in early. Unless he's bleeding. I can't really. But Pinkowski, five minutes, less than five minutes remaining in the game. He's going to hit the showers early tonight. It's kind of an awkward short yeah, fight. He, My only guess is one of them got busted open, and that's why they stepped in. Eh, I don't believe so. Pinkowski with a little bow as he's walking back towards the locker room. But Elias Thompson just grabs him and puts him in a headlock and wouldn't much do that. This stage in the game, I'm going to be honest, there's no sense in even fighting. It's not like you're going to get the energy to get back in the game. Less than two minutes, down four goals. But face off again here at center ice following the fighting penalty. Baton Rouge winning the faceoff, taking it up the near side boards. Kicked aside. Clusot back in behind the net, passing it back over to Mullins. Mullins taking it behind his own net, passing out to Justin Barr. Intercepted by Bradley Richardson. Baton Rouge trying to take it away. They shoot and score. Just another nail in the coffin on this game. I believe that was Larwood that knocked the puck in this go around. So 7-2 to two the score with one minute remaining in regulation play. Baton Rouge just doing what you're supposed to do, crash the net, looking for those second chance opportunities, and they are taking advantage of every one. So that's going to be Larwood from Richardson and Sewardson. 7-2 to two the score. A minute remaining here in regulation play. And Seawolves back here 7.30 tomorrow night. Watch party at Walk-Ons in D'Iberville. Hope to see everyone there tomorrow night. Should be another good night of fun hockey.
Anderson in the face-off circle. Face-off one by Baton Rouge, taking it back in from Baton Rouge into neutral ice. Puck dumped back down into the Seawolf zone. Icing waved off. Lucas Helen with the puck behind his own net. Taken away by Hippolyte Smith. Helen not able to really get away from that. Hippolyte Smith still with the puck. Top of the circle and the top of your screen. Dumping the puck back in behind the Seawolf net. Baton Rouge racing around, walking the blue line. It's Curtis Hanson. The quick shot, quick leg save. Mississippi battling back out. Dalton Anderson trying to get the pass back across. Taken away by Baton Rouge. Less than 10 seconds remaining in regulation. Baton Rouge going to pass it back around. Kill the remainder of this game off. And that will do it tonight, fans. The final score, Baton Rouge 7, your Seawolves 2. Tomorrow's a new day. Every day is a new day. A new tomorrow's day. a new day. All we can look at, new day, new opportunities. Let's bring the crowd to walk-ons tomorrow night. Cheer them loud and proud and have some fun. Amen to that, Derek. Uh, fans, we thank you all for tuning in with us tonight. Um, we did have a fun time. Not the outcome we'd like, but still Seawolves hockey regardless. We look forward to seeing you all tomorrow night at walk-ons for your Mississippi Seawolves. This is Josh Law and Derek Ladner signing off on the Seawolves Broadcast Network.